So now we come to the structure of the human being part two, the anchor points of the subtle bodies. What are the energy centers within each of these subtle bodies, which are the places that those subtle bodies literally anchor in particular points within the physical body? In other words, where can we find the anchoring points of the subtle bodies within the physical? So to clarify the terms that we're going to use, in addition to the term energy centers that everybody's familiar with, it's where energy accumulates and has different functions within the physical and subtle bodies, we're also going to use the term anchor points. As we mentioned a moment ago, an anchor point is a location where a particular subtle body will anchor its functions into the physical body. There are places that you then will be able to find that particular subtle body's activity and be able to um, activate it and use it for practical purposes at where it anchors within the, the body. Now, this is the type of thing that, to be honest, in many ancient traditions was considered to be very secret, hidden knowledge. Where are these anchor points of the subtle bodies that then the initiate can use? But at this point, enough of this has been revealed to the public that we can continue this process. And again, the whole purpose of the work we're doing at Vesica and in these courses is to try to make this level of information as easily available to the public as possible to make it clear and concise. So we're going to talk about the exact location of these anchor points. And so that term is going to help clarify this is where the subtle body anchors within the human being. At other times, we're going to refer to these energy centers as grail points, because a grail is a type of a receptacle for a divine essence to come in. And so these same energy centers are going to be a grail point when we describe them in terms of the divine essence or function that's within them. Each of them catch, in a sense, a different aspect of the body or the mind of God. Each of these centers receive a particular uh, divine dispensation that have to do with the different states of consciousness and energy, for example, in each of the seven different chakras. So all the different energetic locations will be places that are grail cups to receive these different divine essences that sometimes in the East are referred to as nectars, divine nectars of energy. Again, there cannot really be true initiation without the illumination and activation of these centers in the energy field. Now, I also have a note for you that in the system we're about to go through right now, this is a simplified system that is completely accurate. Uh, but don't make the mistake of thinking that what we're talking about in the system is the only reality. It could be seen from other perspectives other than the one we're starting with here. So, for example, there are other aspects of the subtle bodies uh, at the locations that we're talking about beyond those that we're describing. So, for example, if we're talking about the seven anchor points for the etheric life body, that doesn't mean that the chakras of the uh, seven anchor points of the life body only have etheric life functions. They also have astral functions and functions at other levels. So what I'm saying is not meant to be a restriction on the activity of these centers. They do operate with all types of different functions. We're just going to be talking about the primary aspect of these centers.